Hello, friends and fellow bakers. How you doing? It's Chef Tom from ChefInstructorTom.com. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's great to have you on here. Last time we talked a little bit about the cutting method and the creaming method. And today we're going to have a chance to use the cut-in method. And I know that we're just going to make some pie dough. I know a lot of folks are maybe put off by making pie dough. They're a little afraid of it. And I understand you probably have had a bad experience with it. Uh, it's not that hard. I want to show you a real easy way to use the cutting method to get the pie dough made. Uh, we're going to rest it for a little bit and then we're going to make some small pies using some peach filling. And I have the pre-made peach filling. You can use canned filling where you can use a filling you've made for something else. Uh, and I, in a later video I will show you how to make some pie filling. Uh, the first thing you want to do when making pie dough is to mise en place all your ingredients and get them cold. Um, I've got some ice water here uh, that's still got some ice in it there. Uh, I got my butter and what I did with my butter was I cut it up into little little pieces. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but oh, there goes one right now. And what I did was I kept it in the refrigerator for an hour. I've got my kosher salt and my AP flour and we're all set to go. Uh, if you don't already have your mise en place, uh, mise en place uh, then mise it and then throw it in the fridge. And I know you're like, oh my God, an hour in the fridge? I want to make pie dough right now. That hour in the fridge is really going to help you in the long run because it's going to keep everything really cold. Even the flour, the salt, and the water, everything has to be super, super cold. Um, you can make pie dough by hand. My hands are a little bit too warm to do that. I can't really do that. If you find that you like making it by hand, be my guest. You can just cut the butter in by hand. I'm going to use a stand mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer, do it by hand. But keep everything cold. Work quickly. That's really important. In addition, you might want to use a cutter. Um, you, I'm just going to use a, uh, a tart pan. I'm just going to use this as my cutter. And this is a good size for a hand pie. You don't really need too big at all. If you wanted to cut around the bottom, you could do that as well. Uh, I'm going to use a uh, chef's knife. I also have a scooper for my filling. So the filling here is the, uh, the peach pie filling. And if you've made pie filling and maybe the, the cuts are kind of big, um, cut them down using your chef's knife, of course. And you just put a scoop or two in there and you're all set to go. Um, the pie filling uh, should be cooled if you've already made it. It's hot. Cool it down before you make the pie because you don't want to melt the pie dough. Uh, and then a spatula, maybe a scraper. You won't need that much material. You're going to want to, if you're ready to assemble, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 375 and have probably a half sheet pan with either a sill pad or a uh, uh, piece of parchment down uh, on the pie and the uh, bottom of the pan to catch any drips that might come off. Uh, and then we'll assemble the pie. Let's make the pie dough first. So let's put our ingredients in the bowl. And as we already started with the, uh, the butter there a little bit. Uh, just put everything in the bowl except for the ice water, and that's a key thing. So my salt, butter, and uh, and flour are going to go in this bowl. And then we're going to put it on low speed. And while that's happening, we're going to scale out the water. Now, if you'll notice, I already had ice water here with a little ice in it. We can just put, pull the ice cubes out. And I don't really scale the water pre ahead of time. We're gonna put about 100, 120 grams of water in there. And the reason I mentioned more water is because you may need a little bit extra water and that's okay. But now I've got super cold ice water I can use to make this pie dough. And already the butter is getting cut into that flour. The flour is getting coated with the butter. Uh, the chunks of butter are getting smaller, uh, but they're not melting into it. And that's a key thing you want to think about too. Um, soft butter is just going to work its way into the flour and you'll end up, you won't see any chunks at all. The chunks are what makes it flaky though. Let me show you what this looks like when it gets cut in pretty well. And you can feel it, it's still very, very cold. And there's chunks of butter, and they're getting broken up. But I think we're almost to the point where I'm ready to add some water. Put the paddle back on. And with the machine running, we're just going to keep it on low speed. I want to add 
all but a little bit of that water. I might use, might leave it a little bit behind there. And it should come together relatively quickly. And just stop it there. Now you can see that that is not completely mixed yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it onto the countertop right here. And you'll see how I bring it together. Clean off the paddle. mixer out of the way and just kind of mush it all together. We do a lot of mushing with pie dough and you might have seen people put a little bit extra water in there or vinegar. I don't bother with that. That's not my way. I just use water, butter, salt, and flour. And if you learn your technique, you don't really need any of those special little uh, techniques uh, that people use sometimes to, to make up for bad technique. That looks pretty good. That is pretty much it. Now you might have also seen, remember back when we made uh, biscuits, you could also roll this out and fold it in thirds, maybe do it a couple times. And what's going to happen is with that is you're going to start to build up those, those layers of flakiness. But we don't really need that for today. I want to just wrap this in plastic and we will let it rest for an hour. I know, more rest. And then we'll make our pie. This will rest in the refrigerator for one hour. While the dough is taking a rest, let's talk about filling. Now, there's no shame to using pre-made pie filling. Uh, I've done it, I've done it in hotels, uh, people do it all over the world. You can find some pretty good canned or jarred pie fillings. Um, my mom always loved mincemeat pie. Can't say I'm the hugest fan myself, but uh, we always bought that in jars. In the hotel, we would often use a beautiful cherry pie filling from a can. Um, now, I like to make my own generally if I have the fruit. Uh, today, I have that peach filling, uh, and I made it for today's pies. Um, but we'll have another video on pie filling in the near future. You're going to want to stay tuned for that one, of course. And just to let you know, this is a cooked fruit pie filling. Use cooked fruit method for when your fruit is very uh, hard or it needs to be cooked down a little bit. And these peaches were pretty hard. It's not exactly peach season yet. And you know, you could actually do better with maybe even frozen peaches. And that will work really well too. The frozen peaches are great. They're IQF or individually quick frozen. And they work great as well. And there you would use the cooked juice method. Uh, when you have uh, a lot of juice in your fruit, maybe like uh, if you're doing mm, blueberries or something like that you would do uh, cooked juice pie filling. And uh, just to give you a little um, background in this too, these pies, this, these kind of, kind of hand pies I'm making, uh, are kind of inspired by the old Hostess fruit pies we used to get in school when we were little kids. Now, it might be a Chicago thing, but maybe uh, Hostess is, is all over the country now. In, in those days, they were the little pies and they had like a, a glaze on top. And it was we, when I was driving back from uh, New Orleans, uh, I stopped at a uh, gas station and got one and really enjoyed it. Wasn't quite as good as I remember when I was a kid, but it was still pretty good. So um, that's kind of what we're trying to recreate today. I think I'm going to make something that's probably even a little bit better than that. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but uh, and get your rolling pin ready. We're going to make some good pies. Now, I just got this out of the refrigerator. It's now cold and firm and ready to be rolled out. Uh, if you give it some rest, it will hydrate really nicely and it'll be a lot easier to roll out than if you try to roll it out um, uh, early on in the process. Now I'm only going to use half of the dough and I want to put the other half back in the refrigerator. Uh, and you can start to see 
the little chunks of butter in there, that's what's going to make your, your pie that much more flaky. So we'll put this back in the fridge and keep it cold. Just in case we need more pie dough, or maybe we want another batch later on, but it keeps it cold. Next, we're going to use a technique, which I don't know where I learned this technique, but I learned it from somebody along the way. And if I just tried to roll this all out as in one piece, it would just kind of crumble. It would not really hold together quite as well. But I learned this sort of stacking and mushing technique. There's a lot of mushing in this, uh, this endeavor. But you stack up those pieces. I just cut half the dough in three pieces. And then I'm going to push straight down. And then now we can, and it's with no flour on the bench. I'm going to put down a little bit of flour. And I want to roll this out. it over. Now, now if I were doing um, a regular round pie, of course I'd want to get a round piece of dough. But for today, since we're going to be cutting this up into smaller pieces, uh, I want kind of a rectangle. We're looking for a thickness of about an eighth of an inch. And the key to it, too, is to keep moving it. Don't let it ever get stuck to the, the uh, bench at all, because if it gets stuck, then you're probably going to have rips. Um, we want to keep this all real nice and cohesive. And if you need to, you can always use your bench scraper, get up underneath it. You can also, if you ever do find yourself getting it stuck, put a little flour on this side and just push in like that. It'll come right up. So pretty good. We're almost there. That looks pretty good. This side's still a little bit thick. I want to go a little bit longer on that one. I just don't want a really super thin crust. I want to, you know, have a little bit of body to it. And again, something you can hang on to, too. This is going to be a hand pie. It's not going to be uh, sitting on your plate. That looks pretty good. And the thickness is about just a little more than an eighth of an inch. Maybe go a little thinner. And you want to kind of feel, make sure it's all the same thickness all the way across. You might also come back this way and just a very light roll this way will give you that real even crust to it. So let's cut these guys out. I'm only getting three on the first roll. Now we can re-roll this dough. It, we're going to use one for the bottom and one for the top, obviously. These guys should also probably be refrigerated uh, after we cut them because that way they're going to uh, stay firmer. Now what you can also do is just kind of lay these scraps up like this, kind of like that, and then re-roll from this point, and you'll keep some of that flakiness intact. We do need a little bit of flour. Yeah, it's kind of messy, but it's worth it in the long run. I recently had a student ask me, how do you know when to turn it over? And what I'm doing is I'm turning it over so I get both sides coated with a little bit of flour there. Makes it easier to, uh, to work with. Also, you could scrape off any excess pie dough that comes off on the, uh, on the rolling pin there, too. And there we go. Now we got it back to the same thickness. We can go ahead and cut this guy. Like so. And it's still going to be pretty flaky. So now we've got four pieces. And this can go on your pan. 
and these can go back in the refrigerators to chill for a few minutes. We are ready to assemble these pies now. Now, another thing you might want to do too, is if you have any excess flour on there, just brush that off and that way it will, uh, it will get a much nicer crust on it. So if you have a little extra flour, just brush those off. Uh, we're also going to use a little bit of egg wash on this. So I already pre-mixed my egg wash there. Uh, and then we're going to seal the pies together with egg wash as well. Well, let's put our filling. Let's, let's separate these guys out. And we will put filling on one of these rounds. And just a little bit in the center there. That's all we really need. Maybe a little bit more. But you don't want to overdo it because you're going to have leakage if you're not careful. Uh, we'll put just a little bit more there. I want to get plenty of filling in each one. I think it looks pretty good. And then we'll put a little bit of egg wash around each one. And I'm going to show you a cool sealing technique to make sure that they really stay shut. Um, I was a little sloppy there, but be careful. You don't want to get a lot of extra egg wash around the sides because that's where it's going to burn for sure. So we're just going to egg wash each one of those around the side here. And this is just one beaten egg. You don't have to use any kind of fancy egg wash here. If you want to use other egg wash or if you just want to use water, you could use water here as well. That works fine. I like the egg wash myself because I'm going to put egg wash on top of the pie anyway. And so now I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to bring it over the top. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stretch. As I bring that down, I'm stretching it all the way around. Push any filling that might be coming out around the edge there. Try not to get any filling on the outside of the pie. Push down, not really super hard, enough just to seal it. And we'll get rid of those air bubbles in just a second. I'm going to show you a technique I learned at the Ritz Carlton for making uh, beautiful looking uh, French tarts. And it they seal up really well and they don't leak. Oh, I see a little extra filling there we don't need. Push that down. And you can kind of push the filling in towards the center. And keep it all nice on the inside. Like you're making a giant ravioli. This is one crazy ravioli though, huh? Okay, so now we have them all assembled. I'm going to scoot them off so they have a little bit of room to grow. They won't really grow, I'm just kidding. And what I want to do now is just egg wash these guys on top. And I'll, see, I'll show you why in just a second. With the back of my knife, not the sharp side, the other side, I want to press with two fingers like this and kind of push in. And we'll seal those guys up. Push in with two fingers and then kind of push in with the knife. And you get a really nice fluted edge. I mean, in addition to the fluted edge we already have. We'll do all four of those. And I'm really sealing these up really well that way. Now, a lot of people will want to use the fork. Nothing wrong with the fork method. But I kind of like this one. It kind of gives it a kind of super decorative look to it. And the reason I wanted to egg wash first was that way I can make sure I don't get any sort of pooling of egg wash in those little divots there. It just comes out nice and super flaky and crispy at those edges. So 
So I'm kind of pushing with the knife. I'm kind of pushing with the side and the edge of the knife there as I push that in. And then one last thing we're going to do is we're going to put a vent in the top up here. We're going to cut a little, little hole in the middle. And you can do it, open it up a little bit more there. I'm not going all the way to the bottom. I'm just going to cut like a little cross in there. And don't go all the way to the bottom because you don't want to pierce the bottom crust at all. What this will do is it will allow us to vent this pie and let the steam out as it bakes. Oven is preheated to 375 and we're going to bake it for about 20-25 minutes. Mmm, so good. Man, it's flaky. You can see the top there, really flaky. And also not, not greasy on the bottom either. Man. Man, those were so good. I, I hope you try these. I think you're going to really like them. Uh, the other cool thing is once these uh, cool all the way, you can freeze them. Now I'm going to put them in, I'm going to put the ones I'm not eating for dinner tonight in a Ziploc bag and then uh, put them in the freezer. Uh, and then when you want one, you can defrost it, reheat it, put it in the toaster oven. I don't know if I'd put them in the toaster per se, but the toaster oven should work. Or just eat it cold after you defrost it. I got to say, I think I like the heated ones a little bit better. I don't judge. You do what you got to do. You do you, of course. Uh, either way, they are amazing. Uh, it's just the right size for a snack or dessert on the go. You don't have to eat the whole thing at once. You can eat half of it if you wanted to, uh, but it would go nice in a backpack. Hope you enjoyed the pie today, and I hope you do make that or make a full-size pie. If you did, please like and subscribe. Let me know what you think and what you did. What kind of pie are you going to make? See you next week. Happy baking.